This video is sponsored by Ground News. On Tuesday, June 4th, 1996, the skies were clear and the weather conditions were ideal over the Pacific Ocean as the United States and several allies conducted the world's largest maritime exercise. As they performed a teaching practice, U.S. Navy pilot Lieutenant Commander William Royster and Bombardier Lieutenant Keith Douglas were aboard a Grumman A-6 intruder, one of the world's most formidable and versatile aircraft. In service for almost three decades, the intruder was constantly called upon to fly the most difficult all-weather missions, seeing action in every conflict the United States was involved in since Vietnam. However, in a strange twist of fate, a Japanese warship mistakenly engaged with the American aircraft and fired at it at 50 rounds per second on that fateful day. Soon, the intruder's engines were on fire and the warplane began to spin out of control, setting off an international crisis between the two powerful nations. Comparing different news sources to find out the real truth about a story can often make you fall down a rabbit hole of confusion. That's why Ground News, a website and app that shows you how different news articles are being covered across the political leanings of each organization, is one of the most useful tools available online to learn about the latest domestic and global news. Our favorite feature of Ground News is the blind spot function. This story, about a potential F-16 Fighting Falcon export sale to Turkey, is a great example of Ground News' capabilities. With 67% of the coverage on this story being done by right-leaning news organizations, Ground News lets us know that this story is a blind spot for people and media organizations on the left. As you read through all available sources, it's surprising to discover which angles each news organization has, as well as which details of the story are emphasized, exaggerated, or completely ignored. Get the story behind the story with Ground News, a small team of data-driven people, all led by a NASA engineer. Go to ground.news slash dark skies, click on the link in the description below, or download the Ground News app to diversify your media consumption and support Dark Skies today. A worthy successor. Shaped by the Navy's experiences during the Korean War, during which air support had frequently been unavailable unless fair weather conditions were present, the service spotted the need for a close air support attack bomber aircraft capable of hitting the enemy at any given time. The decision was heavily influenced by the weather limitations, as well as the advent of turbine-engined aircraft. Then, in early 1957, the United States Navy issued an official request for proposal calling for an all-weather attack aircraft for long-range interdiction missions and with short takeoff and landing capability for marine close air support to replace the antiquated piston-engine Douglas A-1 Sky Raider. Almost a dozen design proposals were submitted from eight different manufacturers, including Bell, Boeing, Grumman, North American, Vought, and others. Following a thorough evaluation, the Navy announced the selection of Grumman's Type G-128 and awarded the company a contract to develop it. The design team of the redesignated A-2F-1, led by Robert Nafis and Lawrence Mead Jr., was split between two sites, the company's manufacturing plant in Long Island and the testing facilities at Naval Weapons Industrial Reserve Plant in Massachusetts. After the mock-up review board approved the design in the fall of 1959, the first prototype of the Grumman A-6 Intruder made its maiden flight in April of the following year. Technological Intruder The test program required to develop the A-6 Intruder took an unusually long time due to the aircraft's advanced navigation and attack equipment, requiring many changes to remove unwanted features and expiate aerodynamic deficiencies. The aircraft turned out to be a two-seat twin-engined monoplane with a 53-foot wingspan and a maximum speed of 640 miles per hour at sea level built to perform carrier-based attack missions regardless of prevailing weather or light conditions. Notably, Grumman's Intruder was the first Navy aircraft fitted with an integrated airframe and weapons system, operated equally by its two-person crew, a pilot and a weapons officer and bombardier navigator. 
The size of the aircraft's state-of-the-art radars led the engineers to install them on the nose and side-by-side -side in the cockpit. The resulting sizable blunt nose, combined with its slender tail, inspired many nicknames from its creators and crews alike, including the Double Ugly and Iron Tadpole. While the aircraft did not carry any sort of guns, and there was no internal bomb bay, a wide-ranging variety of stores could be externally mounted. These weapons, ranging from an assortment of rockets, bombs, and missiles, including nuclear charges, would be installed in many payload combinations, depending on the A6's mission. The intruder design also incorporated several cutting-edge features, especially in the 1960s, when it was not typical for a fighter aircraft to have sophisticated avionics with multiple computers. This cutting-edge design was the reason NASA chose Grumman and designer Lawrence Mead Jr. over other companies to build the Lunar Excursion Module, a small-sized spacecraft with two onboard computers, an essential part of the American space program. Vietnam When the Grumman A-6 entered operational service in February of 1963, the type became the first genuinely all-weather attack bomber in history. The intruder then served as the Navy's de facto medium attack mainstay for the next 30 years of conflict, crisis, and Cold War procedures. With 687 production models, the type was a great asset to both the Navy and the Marine Corps throughout its lengthy lifespan. The first operational squadron in the Vietnam War to receive the model was VA-75, Attack Squadron 75, nicknamed Sunday Punchers, and they took off from the aircraft carrier USS Independence. The aircraft's attack and navigation equipment and systems enabled the crews to attack at night or under adverse weather without having to look out of the cockpit during the mission. In fact, in the type's more than 35,000 sorties during the conflict, the A-6 intruder delivered more ordnance than the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress strategic bomber, losing only 84 models in the dangerous missions. 30 Years of Greatness The aircraft's versatility was further demonstrated in the numerous upgrades and technological enhancements that kept it as the world's premier long-range all-weather attack aircraft for such a long time. Various specialized versions of the A-6 were developed, often responding to urgent military requirements raised during its almost 10-year service in the Vietnam War. Among these variants were a dedicated interdictor, a body store-equipped aerial refueling tanker, and a specialized electronic warfare derivative. A final model, designated A-6F, was in development during the 1980s, but was later canceled. After Vietnam, the A-6 intruder continued to serve the Navy and proved to be the world's best all-weather provision bomber, making effective strikes against targets in Libya during the Gulf of Sidra crisis. Paired with Air Force General Dynamics F-111 Aardvark combat aircraft, intruders penetrated sophisticated Libyan air defense systems. The strike force constantly flew at low altitudes in complete darkness, accurately delivering ordnance and evading over a hundred guided missiles. During Desert Storm operations in 1990 and 1991, intruders charged 85% of all the laser designations and laser-guided bombs dropped in almost 5,000 sorties. Then, after the Gulf War, intruders continued to fly no-fly zone enforcement missions, participating in Operation Restore Hope in Somalia in 1992. Finally, their last operational use was in Bosnia in 1994. Japanese warship shoots down a Navy aircraft. On June 4, 1996, an intruder piloted by Lieutenant Commander William Royster and his bombardier navigator Lieutenant Keith Douglas participated in the biennial Rim of the Pacific maneuvers, the world's largest maritime exercise between allies. The men assigned to attack Squadron 115, the Eagles, were flying off the USS Independence aircraft carrier based in Atsugi, Japan. At 4.15 p.m., Royster and Douglas towed a roughly six-foot target around 1,500 miles west of Hawaii, performing the unusual target task to train Japanese Navy air defense crews. According to official United States Navy reports, 
The target was located around 2.5 miles behind the intruder, while the Japanese Ministry of Defense told Reuters that the tow cable was only 300 feet away. Whatever the case, the intruder was mistakenly engaged and shot down by the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force Asagiri-class destroyer Yuguri with its Phalanx Sea Whiz gun. The Phalanx close-in 20mm gun weapon system, operated by the United States and its allies, automatically detects, evaluates, tracks, and engages all incoming threats, including anti-ship missiles, aircraft, sea skimmers, and small boats. And while air crews all around the world are well informed about how devastating the weapon can be, the two naval aviators flying aboard the A-6 intruder got to experience it firsthand. As the jet's center fuselage was hit with 50 rounds per second, its engines quickly erupted in flames, and with the hydraulics knocked out, the American A-6 began to spin out of control after being shot down by the Japanese in a friendly fire accident. Royster and Douglas managed to eject just in time, and the jet came down right by the destroyer's starboard side. Almost 50 years after the surrender of Japan in World War II, the Japanese destroyer blasted a United States Navy aircraft out of the sky for the very last time. Response After the incident, both naval aviators were rescued by a motor launch and taken back to their aircraft carrier by helicopter. While U.S. officials tried to play down the incident to smooth relationships with their close ally, Japan immediately put a temporary ban on live ammunition exercises, and both nations launched their own inquiries into the matter. While initial investigations blamed the failed exercise on a mechanical failure in the weapons systems, it was later discovered that it was simply human error. Afterward, U.S. President Bill Clinton formally accepted a Japanese apology for the 1996 incident. After a distinguished career, the intruder was in the final months of operational service, and its participation in the exercise was one of the type's final assignments. Still, the Phalanx system was upgraded with infrared and electro-optical cameras to provide more visual identification friend or foe capabilities and thus help avoid friendly fire incidents. The last Navy intruder operators to fly off a carrier deck were part of Attack Squadron 75, whose pilots flew several of them from the deck of the USS Enterprise in December of 1996, sporting a retro paint job. The Grumman A6 intruder was officially retired in 1997, after which several airframes awaiting wing installment in a Northrop Grumman facility were sunk off the Florida coast, forming an artificial reef known as Intruder Reef. Thank you for watching Dark Skies. Before you go, please let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and tell us which is your favorite feature of the exemplary A6 intruder. Also, for more historical and military content, don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels, and stay tuned for more.